it's something that I always wanted to do and uh, I didn't start stand up until I was 26 so a lot of the comics that I that were around here were a lot younger than me and I kind of felt you know out of place because like oh shit man like <coughs> these young cats have been doing it longer than me and they're much younger but uh, it got to the point where like all of my plans for my life up to that point fell apart and stand-up was one of those things where it's like okay I've always talked about this I've always wanted to do it everything else fell apart it's time to fucking do it or stop talking about it you know so that's how I started but I felt weird being 26 surrounded by you know 19 to you know 22 year olds uh, but I will say that like I had lived a whole life before I started doing comedy so I felt like that kind of set me apart because even while I was starting out I was talking about stuff that you know was a little bit heavier than what they were doing. It was rough. Uh, I did not do well um, at all, like for a long time. Uh, but it was one of those things where it was like, okay, I've done it a few times now. I get laughs here and there. Um, I'm, and I've always kind of approached it like one of the metaphors I use for myself is that, you know, every set is a puzzle and you have to put it together differently every time, even though you have the same pieces, right? So after failing for like a, a long time, I'm just like, oh, yeah, but like the puzzle is still there. I can still do it. And so I, I literally is, it's just, you know, it's masochism. Like, <laughs> I just kept doing it because I was like, well, I'm failing, but I can be better at this, you know? I don't watch a lot of uh, specials, you know? The comedians that I, I really pay the most attention to are either local comics here or comics who are coming from out of town, who are kind of on that like cusp level of uh, they're ahead of where I am, but they're also not like super famous household names. So people like Sean Patton, uh, Matthew Broussard, Dulce Sloan, uh, Clayton English, um, uh, Ryan Singer, so uh, Rory Scovel, although Rory is, uh, is, and Dulce is also, you know, they're, they're getting fairly recognized, but like, uh, I get a lot more out of watching them perform than I do watching um, like actual specials. I will every, every here and there, but like I, I, to me, it's more inspiring to see someone who is closer to the level that I'm at now, but also where I want to be. You know, so it's I it's it's one of those things where like, you know, I'll see Sean Patton when he was here, or Ryan Singer, and I'm like, it's that double-edged sword of being so fucking angry and frustrated that they are so fucking funny, but also knowing that they're not that far ahead of me, and so it's just a matter of putting in the work, you know. And I don't get that feeling when I watch people like Bill Burr or Kevin Hart or whatever, because like that level is way, of, like way steps beyond where I'm at. So watching the people who are just a level or two above me really gets me going more. Now, growing up, you know, I, I was born in '86, so like I remember seeing like the Sinbad Comedy Central special, knowing every word of it, Dana Carvey. So I guess those were my first influences, but in my opinion, you know, uh, Richard Pryor was the greatest stand-up comedian of all time. So I grew up watching Saturday Night Live, and uh, I mean, I still do. It's one of those shows where, you know, making sketch comedy every fucking week, most of it's gonna be bullshit, but every once in a while there's like, just brilliant stuff, you know. Um, one of my favorites was uh, 
um, oh fuck, what's his Garrett Morris? Like the early SNL days when he's on, and it's uh, I'm gonna sh get me a shotgun and kill all the whiteys I see. Sound like Weekend Update, and he was like a recently released, uh, wrong, wrongfully convicted prisoner. And you know, it's like, hey, what are you gonna do now that you're you've been cleared of all these charges and he starts singing this song of like I'm gonna get me a shotgun and kill all the whiteys I see and I, I love that uh, I really enjoyed Derek comedy which is like you know um, uh, Donald Glover's like early internet stuff but comedy movies man I think Dumb and Dumber is a perfect comedy um, Friday is a perfect comedy movie Big Lebowski's up there. Um, yeah, I'm all over the place. I grew up watching Seinfeld, um, so that's one of my favorites. But as a an adult, the ones that I find myself rewatching over and over and over again are Community, uh, Arrested Development. Uh, I mean, it's always sunny. Yeah, stuff like that. I don't know, man. I can't answer that because some of those, some of the ones that made me angry inspired were like long ass bits. Um, yeah, I, I don't have an answer for you off the top of my head on that one. Probably someone from here. Um, in Atlanta, I'd say David Perdue. Patrick Dalton, um, but in terms of like dream, well, and, and again, like I said, I don't watch a lot of specials, but like those people who are a little higher than me, you know, Ryan Singer, Sean Patton, Rory Scoville. Pryor, Chappelle. Mark Marin, um, Bill Burr, maybe like a, <sighs> hmm, Don Rickles, Rodney Dangerfield, and uh, Lisa Lampanelli. I'm all of them. Uh, I used to do, like, when I was in college and stuff, I would write and and uh, do videos of, like, sketch and, and that kind of stuff. Improv is something that I have never done, but I feel like it can only benefit what I'm already doing, you know? Um, just in terms of, you know, stretching something that I'm not comfortable with or, you know, like working out a new muscle or whatever, you know, whatever the thing is. So, I mean, all of it, honestly, like acting, absolutely. I've, I, I'm used to writing stuff, uh, but the, what I want to be doing is just being more active. You know, the more, the more darts you throw at that board, the easier it is to like get things done. So whichever is the first one to stick, you can use that as the jumping off point to do all of the other stuff that you're interested in. You know, so yeah, I want to be doing all of that shit. This is something that I, I go through a lot is, is reevaluating my goals for comedy, where I, like where I see myself. Um, it used to be, oh man, I want to be a-list famous, you know, I don't, I don't want that. Um, my ideal would be to be like a writer uh, and also like kind of character bit actor in different movies, sitcoms, whatever, but then also make a living um, doing stand-up for a crowd that gets me. So in that, in terms of that, one of my dreams is to be able to get big enough to come back to Atlanta and sell out the Tabernacle. Because that's a perfect, it's a big venue, 
but it's intimate. So if I can get to the point where I can go do whatever the fuck else it is and come home and sell out my favorite venue in my home city, that's what I want to do. That's my goal. I don't have like a professional Facebook page. It's just my personal page, Joseph Highsmith. Um, on Twitter, I'm Highsmith Comedy. And on Instagram, I'm Joe Fossa, uh, like Mufasa, but with Joe. So J O F A S S A. Like I said, I started a little later, so I felt like. I lived a, a bit more life than a lot of the people I started with. So I deal a lot in my personal life with depression and um, spiritual angst and, you know, existential shit, substance abuse. So when I'm on stage, I want to make those topics accessible, like, you know, like, if. So one of the jokes that I have that I feel like is, that I am the most proud of, that I feel like is defining of what I'm trying to have my voice be like, is about my dad dying. And you know, it's heavy and it took me a long time to perfect that joke. Um, but every single time I've done it, I've had people come up after the show and be like, yo, you know, I'm, I'm going through a similar thing. But my thing is, is that, you know, my stage presence is a reflection of who I am in my personal life and the stuff I put out there. I just want you to know who I am, what I'm dealing with, because one of the things that we convince ourselves about is that we're isolated, you know, you're the only one going through that and it's not fucking true. So if I can talk about the stuff that I'm going through and hope that a handful of that audience connects to it, that's my goal, you know. Hey guys, it's Joseph Highsmith from Atlanta, Georgia. Check out my interview and my good friend on acutiepie.com.